Welcome to a quick and very um, ad hoc tutorial on how to upload your health immunization and TV and other clearance documents into Castle Branch. Uh, I assume by this point you have created your um, Castle Branch immunization package um, by following the instructions sent to you. Um, so we're going to start with that assumption. The first thing I want to talk about is, of course, your documents themselves. Um, to get yourself ready to do this, I suggest that you put um, all your documents in a folder so that it's easy to access and that you name them something clear so that you know what you need to upload. Um, you don't have to use this naming scheme. Glenn Miyashiro is the name of the fake account I've created for this demonstration. So I just named everything Glenn Miyashiro, this and that. But you don't have to do it. You could just go with, for example, HABLS CPR, and that'd be fine. Okay, just try to make it clear for yourself. Um, I have <clears throat> all the documents as PDFs. Castle Branch will accept non PDFs, um, but you should get used to turning all your documents into uh, PDFs. Um, they're generally more preferred by certain types of agencies. So, but if you have them as images, that's fine as long as the again the quality of the image is sufficient to be viewed. Okay. Now, when you log into Castle Branch, um, you should come to your main dashboard page. You're going to go to My CB instead of CB Bridges, where you're doing all your COVID nineteen things. You're going to my CB, click go. Oh, we have a problem for some reason. Okay, I don't know why we had a problem, but it seems to have resolved itself. Um, if you have the problem, then just try again and see what happens. Okay. Now you should see, of course, your CB Bridges thing. Um, and now this is where we have your code will be different. This is not necessarily the code you're going to be using. This is the sample code I had created for this, um, for another um, project. But I'm using this account for your demonstration. The requirements, however, should all be the same, though. Um, you should see these requirements. And you should see all these incompletes. Um, the process is, for the most part, fairly intuitive. There is one slightly non-intuitive thing, and it's going to seem very redundant, but um, that's just the way the system works. So let's start with actually the easiest one of all, like the ones that are really simple, like CPR. All you do is click incomplete. You'll get this drop down, and then it'll just have a description of the requirements and so forth. Now, what you want to do, of course, is um, upload the document. So you click your computer or flash drive, you go browse, and then I go to desktop health docs, and then where is, um, oh, hold on, there it is. This is my um, CPR card. I click that, and it's spin, spin, spins, and it may take a moment, but I have uploaded the document. All right, and then um, you have to hit submit, um, to finalize and notice it now says in progress okay and you're gonna do that for all of these and I'll do one more of these easy ones just again to reemphasize click on it you'll see the description go to your computer or flash drive click on this um, here is my form B I click open and it's spin, spin, spin. And then I hit submit. And then in process. And you notice the CPR certification has changed from in process to pending review. And so that's just telling you that um, the system has processed your document and now it has alerted the system that it needs to be reviewed. Um, and so it's just pending a review. All right, and then you would do the same thing for HIPAA, for Form C, for me, and of course your bloodborne pathogen certificate, which um, Professor O'Brien has told me 
should be located on Laulima. Okay, so influenza, Tdap, probably going to be fairly easy to do. Um, I'm not so worried about that. Um, the other, the titers, however, might be a little confusing, and so I wanted to kind of touch on that real quickly. Um, and the reason why it might be confusing is that you'll notice that the titers are all broken up into their own requirements. And here's the thing. Let's say you have your titer lab report, and let's say all your lab titers were actually on one page. Well, it may seem like, oh, I only need to upload it one time. But in fact, you're going to have to upload it multiple times. And so um, this may seem really redundant again, but it's just something you're going to have to do. Okay. And so if we go back to um, my documents here, you can see I have a certain things. Now, the measles requirement, you may recall, in addition to titering, you also have to have two MMRs, right? So you're actually going to be uploading your titers plus your originals. Now, let's say that you had a negative titer for measles. In addition to your titer report, your two original MMRs, you're also going to have to upload your revaccination information as well, okay? And so you might be uploading um, multiple documents, okay? So let's just kind of walk through that process, okay? So again, I click incomplete your computer. Now, you'll notice that I have actually a couple different ways I could do this. I could do this, um, but I'm going to go with the one where I put all the titers into one PDF. So I'm going to do that, all right? I click open and the file is chosen, All right? But like I said, that's not enough. So the good news is you can actually add uh, more than one file, but unfortunately you can only add one file at a time. So I'm also gonna add the two original MMRs. All right, and then one more thing. Because I have a negative titer for my rubiola, I have to also submit my revaccination information as well, which is in this file. So again, I have uploaded a copy of the rubiola titer, the original two MMRs, and the revaccinations. All right, and now I hit submit. All right, let's go on to mumps. Now for mumps, again, I'm going to have to do the titers, right? Because as I mentioned, we have to submit the titers. Um, I also have to submit the two MMRs, but let's say my mumps titer was positive. I won't have to submit the revaccination. I'm just gonna to have to do the, the titer and the original two MMRs. And again, I know that seems redundant that I, I'm sending the two MMR information again, but this is what you just have to do with this system. All right, so again, I go back and then I upload the two original MMRs. All right, and then I hit submit. Oh, and that's, that's not good. All right, go back to my CV. Basically, I backed up, backed up until something happened. Um, okay, good news, at least the information's still there, so I hit submit again. And yay, all right. And then you would do the same thing for rubella, assuming your rubella is positive. I would do the same thing I did with mumps. Now let's move on to varicella. So let's say my varicella was also negative, like my rubiola. I would have to submit, um, oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. I would have to submit again the titer. All right. All right, and then I'm going to do 
one more time. So read vaccination because the read vaccination file contains my VZV booster shot records along with the follow up MMR booster shot records. And then I hit submit. Okay. Hepatitis B. Again, let's assume that my hepatitis B was negative. So again, I'm going to upload the titer results. And then let's say the revaccination information is in this PDF for my hep B booster shots. And then I upload it. And again, yes, I know that is redundant, but that's the way this system works. All right, so tuberculosis, um, as you can see, there are many routes and that's why tuberculosis had a lot of kind of complicating thing. Um, I strongly suggest put all your TB documents into one PDF just to make your life simple. If you have them spread out in multiple documents, again, that's fine because again, you can upload multiple documents in this case. I put all my TB documents in one PDF, so I just upload it. And for some reason it is taking a while, but we just have to be patient. Um, this system may take a moment. Hopefully we don't get that weird bad connection um, screen that we had a moment ago. Oh, this is not good. Okay, I'm just going to hit the reset button because this is taking too long for some reason. I don't know why it took that long. Um, so I'm going to try that again. Um, there's a TV document. Open. All right, thankfully it worked this time. I hit submit. And there you go. And then I. Same thing for the Tdap and influenza. I strongly again recommend that you put your Tdap information all into one PDF. If not, again, that's fine. You can, you know, upload more than one document if for some reason your Tdap information is in more than one document. And if for some reason all your vaccination is in the same thing, well, again, that may seem redundant to be uploading it multiple times, but again, you're going to have to upload it because um, you can't assume, and this may sound weird, but you can't assume the person who is reviewing your measles requirement, for example, is the same person reviewing your bumps or the same person who's going to be reviewing your rubella. So each entry has to have the information it needs. You can't count on them going, oh, I don't see it in rubella. Maybe it was in mumps. Um, you have to, again, make sure every document is complete. Um, and then one more thing, we'll just do influenza, and here is my influenza. And then I hit submit. And there we go. And again, like I said, just do the rest with HIPAA, Form C, Form E, and Bloodborne Pathogen, and you're pretty much set. Um, if you have any questions about the health clearance side of, of things, feel free to email Michael Kurihara at titer at T-I-T-E-R at hawaii.edu. If you have questions about the mechanics or the process of using Castle Branch, then I'm afraid you're going to have to contact Castle Branch um, because Castle Branch is the only one who can help you with like some of the technical issues that you may experience. Um, the way to do that is, of course, by clicking on the need help. All right. Um, Sorry, I don't know why I clicked the home button. Let's go back to my CV. 
click on need help and then you can um, call or submit an inquiry. All right, hopefully this helps. Thank you for your attention.